Number one, does it really need to be remodeled? Can you replace a few items um, and uh, get what you want? Can you repaint something possibly, clean it? Um, there are, I've, I've came across uh, projects before where the toilets had calcium deposits on them and then I would go down and get a strong cleaner, clean the toilets and uh, solve the problem. So this is something a lot of people really don't consider. They want to just go in there and remodel it and they want a new bathroom. And if that's the case, then um, let's just go to tip number two. Number two, and of course, uh, my favorite, the one I would consider to be the most important tip out of the 10 would be the money. If you don't have it, don't spend it. I don't recommend using credit cards or getting loans, but again, this is just who I am. I understand that if you need to do this, then go for it, but understand that you will, will be paying a little more money for the project. You'll be paying interest on some of the items that you purchase or um, services that you have to hire out. So create a budget, stick to the budget, and uh, try not to go past the budget. Your budget is going to be a priority and priority number one it will be. Number three, should you hire a bathroom designer? Um, it all depends upon how much money you have and how much creativity you lack. If you do not have the creativity, you're having a hard time imagining what the bathroom is going to be like, then this might be the perfect fit for you. But keep in mind that this can add um, in some cases, quite a bit to the cost of the project. So for those do-it-yourselfers, I suggest that you go on the internet, um, check out magazines and books on bathroom remodeling, go to the library. Um, but again, the internet's full of um, ideas. Check it out and uh, see if you come across something that you like. But keep in mind the budget. Budget is going to be priority and whether or not that particular project um, that you're looking at um, will actually fit into your um, space or work well. You know, for example, if you see a window like this, I like that window and I like this, but in your bathroom, the shower stops right here and the wall is right here. You know, the only window you're going to be able to put in would be something half the size. This is common thing I see. When I was doing a lot of bathroom remodeling, someone would pull out a picture and uh, they would say, here's what I want. And then, of course, I would explain to them what they're actually going to get. Number four would be colors. Uh, I, would, I would suggest avoiding getting uh, a little carried away with some colors uh, that somebody else might not like or, you know, you might like it, but uh, it doesn't seem to match. And I, I have, I've seen people go in, you know, I want a black toilet. And uh, they put a black toilet in and this thing sticks out like a sore thumb. Everybody who walks down the hallway or wherever it sees this black toilet, if that's what you're looking for, go for it. The a reason why I'm suggesting this is that uh, I've actually worked on a lot of homes where people, you know, hey, I want this and I want that. And then they end up selling the property later and have a difficult time selling the property because they have created something in their bathroom that uh, of people just don't like or they can't uh, can't uh, deal with. So that's the only reason why I'm throwing tip number four in here. I'm not suggesting that you don't try and get a little creative with some great colors. You could really make a nice bathroom out of it. And if you're going to be living in that house for the rest of your life and you know that, then do what you want. Tip number five, moving fixtures can be expensive. I can't tell you how many times I would go over to someone's house and they would say, hey, can I move my toilet over three inches or can I move my toilet over to where the bathtub is and switch locations? Um, well, you can. It's just going to cost a lot of money. Moving a toilet on a concrete slab will require somebody to remove the concrete. It will need to be jackhammered and uh, then the dirt will need to be removed and then of course the plumbing will need to be reconfigured. 
And uh, the same thing on a wood framed floor. If you have a subfloor or a floor with a basement where you have floor joist and subflooring, then uh, you might need to plan on locating, relocating the fixtures into areas where you are not going to be in the way of a structural component like a floor joist. It's not uncommon to have a floor joist running right down the center where you would like to move something to. So then of course this might require some type of structural engineering. This is not going to be cheap and can add a considerable cost to your project. Tip number six, and this is another biggie, another problem that uh, designers have, and that's actually fitting everything in there. This would include bathtubs, showers, toilets, sinks, and cabinets. You need to make sure that uh, it fits, every item fits in the allotted space. I can't tell you how many times I've came to a project where somebody, and this seems to be the most common mistake, somebody wants to put a little bigger cabinet in. Maybe they had a 30 inch cabinet before, now they want to put a 36 inch cabinet in and of course it uh, encroaches into a space like the toilet space, most common, and um, creates a building code issue. So when this suggestion I am making here, tip number six, is mainly for building codes um, and space. Uh, you know, if you order a larger tub in either direction, width or um, length, then um, you need to make sure that uh, it's actually going to fit in the area. And don't forget, if you do order some items, the plumbing might need to be moved also. You order a wider tub, then the plumbing drain might need to be moved. And same thing with a sink drain. Tip number seven, and here's something else that uh, most people are not going to think about, and it can, can be a big problem during the project, and that would be replacing old pipes, whether they're drain pipes or water supply pipes. This is a big problem for bathroom remodeling projects as far as trying to keep your, uh, your job or your project inside of its budget. You can actually start remodeling the bathroom tear some stuff out, and then run into a problem that's going to require a lot of money um, to repair. Whether it's removing old rusted pipes that are damaged, um, drain pipes, or removing water supply pipes. Another problem that I've had in the past had to deal with was galvanized pipes, tying in a copper pipe to a galvanized pipe. And you're doing this at the homeowner's request because they don't want to spend the extra money. They don't have it most of the time to replace all of the pipes or to replace a certain amount of pipes to make everything work. So keep this in mind when designing your project. Uh, another thought that I had, and this is a, you know kind of something that is going to going to affect people with older homes is that uh, let's just say that you're remodeling your bathroom and you, you do everything and it looks nice and then uh, you find out a few years later that the pipes need to be replaced and then you need to remove a portion of the bathroom or remove the entire thing you know this would be include removing the bathtubs um, toilets stuff like that in order to get the plumbing redone so if you are working on a project on an older home, it wouldn't be a bad idea to actually consider removing and replacing the pipes underneath the bathtub, I'm sorry, the bathroom, so that you don't need to tear all this up again. So that, again, this is something I don't really hear a lot of, but this could become a big problem uh, in the future. And you know, and, and it really is, it's common. A lot of people just go in and they replace the cosmetic stuff, the stuff you can see, bathtub, toilets, stuff like that. But it's the stuff that's under the, under the foundation. It's underneath the um, floor framing that uh, could be a problem. And again, if it's floor framing, you can have easy access to it. This wouldn't be as big of a problem as it would be if you were dealing with a concrete foundation.
Tip number eight, and this is another uh, biggie, and that would be moving any walls. Let's say you want to make the bathroom a little larger. You might want to put a larger tub in. Uh, maybe you want to put a tub and a shower in. Then there are a few things you're going to need to consider, and that would be whether or not the wall is a load-bearing wall, whether or not it is supporting the roof or the floor above, whether or not it is a, if it's a structural wall. Keep in mind that just because you don't see any shear panel on the wall or uh, any type of uh, framing hardware. It doesn't mean it's not a structural wall. Wouldn't be a bad idea to check with a engineer or another professional to get their opinion on it. And of course, we have all of the electrical that can be in the wall. We have a lot of, uh, if you have a plug, that'd be easy to check. And worse, uh, the worst problem would be plumbing. If you have plumbing pipes sticking um, out of the wall and that's the wall you want to move, this could be extremely costly and uh, time consuming. So let's just uh, reiterate on if you really need to remove a wall or move it, you know, we have structural problems, plumbing, electrical pipes that could be in the way. And it's not going to be an easy uh, an easy task most of the time. Now, I do actually know of one person who removed a wall and made their bathroom uh, a little larger and then uh, took the other section of the bedroom and made it into a master bedroom, so a closet. So they had a three-bedroom house, and now they have a two-bedroom house. One of these has a, um, in the master bedroom, has a larger closet. And on the other side of that, they made the uh, bathroom a little larger. But at the same time, this could affect the value of your home. You can imagine selling a two-bedroom house or a three-bedroom three house could, be, um, could cost you a little bit of money if you actually do something like that. So just don't forget about moving the walls um, with the problems I just said. But if you do move a wall, what are you actually doing to the other room? You know, if you're going to pop the wall out on the outside and build a room addition for something like that, this would be different. You'd be getting more living space. But if you're going to move a wall on the inside of the home, you could actually affect the space on the room on the other side. And keep, keep in mind that there are minimum... Um, requirements for building codes for certain room sizes. Tip number nine, and here's another one that can add a few dollars to your budget, and that would be uh, getting a building permit for the remodel. And uh, again, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because of the budget. My uh, biggest concern with most people is sticking to their budget. And that's not going to happen if you don't have all of your um, items that are going to cost you money in order. So building permits and then of course building codes. Make sure that you follow all building codes even if you are not going to get a building permit. And I know a lot of people remodel bathrooms without building permits. It's not uncommon. But uh, you need to follow the building codes. The reason why I'm suggesting that is because you do not want to go and sell your home and then have some home inspector come in there and say, wait a minute, we got to tear some of this stuff out. And of course, uh, it's going to cost you even more money. So follow all of the building codes. If you don't know what they are, contact your local building uh, department or um, do some research on the internet and see what you can come up with. But don't, don't forget that if you find something on the internet, um, it might be for a different town or community, and it might not. Uh, the, the building codes in your area might be different. So, if you do get uh, some information, it uh, might not be for your area. That's why I'm suggesting to always check with your local building authorities. Tip number 10, and another tip that most people do not follow, and that would be create a plan and do not change it. And this is a biggie. I can't tell you how much money it will cost you or can cost you if you start changing things during the remodel. So take your time, draw up a plan, um, get as many pictures as you can off the internet, uh, figure out what uh, the budget, what's gonna, what everything's gonna cost. 
do all of your research, get, get everything done that you can possibly think of, and then move forward on the project. Do not move forward on the project if you're not 100% clear on um, everything. And I understand some of you are not going to know what it's gonna look like. You can look at some pictures and get some ideas, but you're not going to um, uh, see what it looks like until it's actually finished. And, I, and I've worked on a lot of projects like that where they can start to see it somehow. You put the tub in, I'm starting to see what it looks like. And then you put the tile in, okay, wait a minute, I don't like the tub. This, is, this could be a big problem. So do yourself a favor and uh, pay attention to tip number two, which is the budget, and tip number 10, which is to make a plan and to stick with it and do not change it. And if this video has been helpful, do not forget to hit the thumbs up button. I do realize it's a little longer than uh, some of my other videos. But uh, I think I think that uh, this is an important video to make. I did some research on the internet and I couldn't find a lot of things that mentioned a few of my tips in here. I just couldn't couldn't get it. So hopefully this is going to make a big difference for anyone who's planning on remodeling a bathroom. And this is for the design only. I'm going to try and make another video and I'll put a link here at the end on um, the what actually give you some more tips for the construction process. So remember, this is just for the design phase of the project.